Well, I, I think, you know, that's another important point. Uh, a lot of men ne- neglect uh, to really cultivate a certain type of temperament. They don't realize that one of the values that women do see in us is our ability to keep our head and to stay cool under pressure. And I've had females admit this to me who will start arguments with either men that they're dating or their husbands just to see how they're going to respond. And a lot of times we think that women do this because they want to see if we really love them, if you know we care enough to get upset. But a lot of times it's also to see how we how we deal with pressure because they really have no other gauges in this society to determine the quality and the barometer of our manliness other than what we tell them. So they have to do little stress tests to see because she can always, again, emotionally bully us. Emotionally, again, her intelligence is so much further than ours. So she can do things, but she wants to see when we're at a loss of, for words or when we can't deal with something emotionally, what is our response? Do we want to get physical? Do we shut down? Do we go to logic? Or, you know, where is the threshold of our emotional intelligence? That's a key point which you brought up. So that's a challenge for a lot of women to really be able to determine the extent and the quality of our of our manhood. It, it's a lot, man. And the, the more we talk about it, the more I see that I have to learn. I mean, it, it's like just us speaking today, I'm like, wow, like there's, there's a ton more that I need to know in order to not only pull this off for myself, but just to, to teach. I mean, you know, but that's the whole mm-hmm. point, you know? You know what, too, what makes it easy to learn, and I'm realizing this, man, is having cooperative women, you know, and I'm learning a lot more about polygyny now, you know, because I'm not dealing with base level ignorance, base level foolishness. I'm learning more about how a woman is when she's in her right mind, when she's in her right state, which shows me how I am in my right state. No, I, I, I have to, you know, I have to agree with you wholeheartedly, man. I mean, I've gone through similar situations where things were very bad because of the women that, you know, I chose to be around. And it, it, it scars you. I mean, it, it puts you in this whole mode of, like, you've been through a combat zone. Right. And... You know, even when you have good women, you know, you might snap on them too quickly or you may raise your voice when you didn't need to. You might say things that are that are harmful. And I know that I've had to apologize to my consort a couple of times, you know, where, you know, I was out of line. And I, I had to kind of reel that back and, and say, well, wait a minute, well, I, you know, let me, <laughs> that's going to have to be checked because, you know, I'm not trying to lose my women because I'm losing my head, you see? And uh, that's just real talk, man. See, this, this is stuff, and that's why I'm glad this is just kind of a, a, mm-hmm. a cool sit-down interview, man, because you know, we, we just be real about this stuff. This is yeah. this is real relationship talk right here. Right. And men, men have to see where they've come from and, and when you're in the trenches, remember it's economic warfare strategy. Okay, right. this is this, and it's not so much women all the time. You got good women, but you've been through so much yourself, especially with little resources. You know, sometimes like my resources are diminished. Sometimes I have more, and that, right. of course, we're men. That puts more stress on you when your resources are are more are lower than your than they normally are. It just oh all yeah, the stressors, man. Yeah, yeah, and it's we're battle scarred, and and a lot of people don't realize that. They, you know, especially like when a divorce or something happens, they never consider that the man can actually be hurt. You know that he's right. torn apart because he lost his family. You know that's never a thought. So you know we we usually can't express those things. So then we move forward onto the next situation. But we got all of these these open wounds. We're, we're battle scarred. But a lot of times, a real man. Or not even a lot of times, but a real man is able to 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 fight when he's still wounded in action. You know, he's not going to shut down. You know, so we're used to pushing forward. But the problem is, if you stay on that front line combat for too long, you're either going to get killed or you're going to go crazy. That ability and those opportunities to pull back from the front lines is so valuable. But it goes to what I was saying earlier about being in this age and trying to reestablish your family. At 18, 19, you could play around. You could say, okay, well, 
for two, three years, I'm a goof off while I'm building my polygynous family. But at 35 and up, it's like, you know, I can't waste, you know, 20 days with the wrong woman. <laughs> I don't have it. Right. You know. Hours, man. <laughs> yeah. <Long Okay>. conversation. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I can't even waste that. You know, I'm not in that position. 40s looking at me in the face or 50s looking at me in the face. Retirement is is, is, is right on me. I, I can't play around with you. Lost resources, right. So, you know, when you have resources, you can play around a little bit more. Yeah. Something as simple as, as getting on a bus or a train to go see a consort is a serious thing when you have, you know, limited resources and you're trying to make things stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Some women may One not be One of my consorts, man, is like five states away, man. Mm. You, know, you know, so I, I, I understand. They were supposed to come down here, in fact, uh, two weeks ago. And, mm. uh, and you know, they, they had a, you know, they had a death in the family. And they immediately plan to go, and then all this other stuff just came crashing down. It's kind of like, then we had to handle another matter today. In fact, right before I got on the interview, I got a, a message from it. I'm like, man, I'm like, I mean, it, it stuff was really hitting the fan the past about 96 hours now, four days. I mean, I've been really like put through the ringer, and it's put me right between two women who, you know, I have to try to keep together. And it wasn't them against each other or anything, it was, but it was a. It's been very serious family matters going on, man. And I today right. I just want to break down and cry, man. I mean, I, I was pressed. Yeah. I was pressed. And see, yeah. people listening to this interview, they have to know how real this is. This is not just like, oh, okay, ooh, yeah, women like me, blah blah blah, and I get a bunch of sex. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. man, it's, it's, this it's, is it's serious. Hard. You have to make a, a very stern decision, you know, when you want to engage in this lifestyle. And I've heard people, before I was, you know, um, into plural marriage, I heard people say, oh, it's hard, it's hard. And I would always kind of brush that off because people say everything's hard, <laughs> you know. Um, but this truly is, you know, because you have to not only cater to the needs of, of multiple people, but um, it really tests your own mettle, you know. And then when you have situations again where you might have people leaving or people have challenges and meanwhile you're trying to just hold it together and then you're figuring out how to address new challenges that you've never even heard of especially in a situation where you have women of various social caste within your family you know yeah. you're going to have various dynamics that are going to be brought to you of stuff that you may don't even, you may not even understand yeah you know you got to go back to school for certain women just to be able to accommodate where, where they're at. It, it's, it's very difficult. Or again, a situation where you have a woman who you're with and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're loving her and, you know, you're intensely into her. And then you bring in other sisters based on her agreement and what she says she wants. And like you said, she starts to flake out. And you might end up losing the main one that you love the most. And now you have these other yeah. sisters who you're just getting to know. And you have to still right. try to maintain face. That's why it's so important to have that first wife, because that goes back to the first wife principles chapter. Um, and you were asking me about what kind of wife do you need. Well, right. you have to have a woman who is so tied with you and your mission that she doesn't just let go. Like, like right. nothing is going to pull her away from you. And those right. types of women, I will say, even among polygynists, are very difficult to find. I'm talking about even when you're actually a good man and you're not dirty, you're not unjust, you're just a fair man, righteous man. Um, having that type of woman as your first consort because she's going to help anchor you into polygyny and anchor you as a man and have you be able to handle the rest of the women. That, man, that's hard to find. Yeah, I agree. That is very difficult to find because because mine, we, we didn't really have a courtship, you know? We didn't. And I, I promote courtship, you know?